So I'm going to give you examples here that use both the tablature staff and the traditional five line staff. And hopefully that will uh, reduce the intimidation factor here a little bit and give you some comfort. The tablature staff is not some newfangled thing that's been around um, at least since the loot tradition, but the five line staff is of course applicable to instruments across the entire history of Western music. And uh, that is sort of the, the gold standard for how you communicate musical ideas. And for good reason, because it's very versatile. You can see that um, we have a clef sign here, and this is the treble clef. There are other clefs. There are actually uh, several other clefs, not just one other, uh, the bass clef that you might have seen. But the treble clef is what we're going to use for guitar notation. So we're not going to really uh, talk too much about too many of the other clefs. When you see the treble clef, what that is telling you is that the notes that are attributed to each of these lines are as follows. E, G, B, D, F. And if anybody had piano lessons back when they were young, you might remember every good boy does fine. In between those, we have the space for F, A, C, and E. Now you can put notes above and below the staff, and for that, you're going to use ledger lines. So if I click up here in this blank space, you can see it's going to drop a line up there so that um, you can judge the distance between the note that lives outside the area of the five lines um, and, and hopefully play correctly. Although it's possible to get quite a few ledger lines up there and it does make it a little bit challenging to figure out how many lines are there at a quick glance. However, we're not too worried about a quick glance here. Uh, you can do the same thing below and in guitar you can get notes ranging down to uh, below the third ledger line. All right, so that's just a quick overview of how this staff works, and I know you've seen guitar notation before, so um, this shouldn't be too mysterious, but actually discerning what those notes are can be a little bit daunting. So let's just put a note on every one of these uh, lines just so we get a feel for how that works. So I'm going to do that actually by entering them as... Uh, tab notes down here. If we put a 2 there, there's our note E. There's a G. There's a B, a D, and an F. Now we're going to put some notes on the spaces here. That's F. Well, it wants us to be in the key of G. No, it doesn't. I typed the wrong number. There's an F, there's an A, C, and an E. Let's look at some ledger line notes here. Let's go way down first. All right, there's the lowest note on guitar. Standard tuning is open E. You can see it's below the third ledger line. Let's just look at what those look like on every one of these other ledger lines. All right, on the third ledger line, below the second one, second ledger line, below the first ledger line, on the first ledger line, and there, just below the staff. All right, let's get rid of all those. Go up top here, above that top line, on the line, going up, and up and up and up. All right, you get the idea. Now, getting familiar with these is not really our objective right now. I'm just trying to present them to you um, I'm not even really so concerned that you become a brilliant reader of notated guitar music. My ultimate goal here, as stated in the uh, name of this series of videos, is to give you a foundation in music theory. To have a foundation in music theory, I don't think it's crucial that you are a, a highly skilled reader of 
sheet music for guitar. It's not my objective to make a, a highly skilled reader from watching this series. It's my objective to give you the foundation to understand the fundamentals of music theory so that you can apply that to your own study. So with that in mind, um, I think it's really important that you take the time to be able to identify these notes and put a letter name on them. Uh, not so much that you be able to play something brilliantly based on a written piece, piece of music. Now, if you want to do that, great. I applaud you. I think that's a worthwhile goal. You should keep working on that and um, good luck. But really what I want to see from this video uh, is that you are not as intimidated by the process of trying to interpret what you see on a written piece of music or that you can begin to use the framework of music notation on the five line staff within the treble clef to conceive of your musical ideas and particularly that you can more ably communicate those either on paper or to another musician or maybe interpret somebody else's musical ideas more adeptly because you have this background in musical notation. So one last thing here before we uh, close this out, let's just take a look at some sharps and flats. Now that really shouldn't be uh, too challenging because you've, you've seen all this kind of stuff before. But if I start with, uh, let's say, a, a C, If I want to write a C sharp, you'll notice the sharp comes before, in other words, to the left of the note. If you were trying to perform a piece of music, it doesn't do you any good to see the sharp after the note. So as you're trying to write your own music notation, this is important to remember because a lot of people want to put the sharp after. If I were going to say the name of this note, I would say C sharp. And so people think C sharp, they write the sharp after the note, it doesn't go there, it goes to the left, it goes before the note. Let's look at a flat. Here's the note B. Let's see if it's going to give me a flat here if I type a three. No, it didn't. But let's make it into a flat. Same thing here with the flat sign, and I want you to notice a couple things here. The loop of the B goes around the line or space that the note is on. Notice the note on the B line here doesn't touch the lines around it. If I put a note on a space, It doesn't leak into the spaces beyond those lines. If I put a sharp in front of this note, notice the box in the middle of the sharp sits exactly on the space that the note is on. And if I, let's see here, if I put one on a line, the box sits right around that line. I put a flat on a space that inner loop of the beef of the uh, flat sign here doesn't go beyond the lines of that space. All right, so I hope this starts to explain uh, some of the the fundamentals of notation and this is in preparation for our next several topics, which are going to move from explanation of intervals, building on that to go to the topic of scales and all the variations thereof before we move into chord theory and some of the more complex things about the relationships between scales and chords. So stay tuned for those parts of the series and good luck.